All right, this is a continuation of our study of the book of John from the Bible. And uh, again, uh, just to orientate you, we said that the core theme of the book is God and Jesus wanting to abide with us now, in our, in, within us now, uh, not waiting until after we die and go to heaven. All right. And uh, so we're along this path here where Jesus is the way. Recall that uh, in John, Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. All right. Well, how was Jesus the way? And, you know, I say, well, in, in two ways. One, he opened the way back uh, to God with his sacrifice that paid for our sins, which destined us to be separated from God if it were not for, you know, the propitiatory payment which he made, satisfying the law. And uh, he also showed us the way. We're going to cover this today. Well, how, 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 did, how did he show us the way? All right, so that's today's topic. Let's see here. Uh, all right, so showed us the way. All this stuff up here is how he opened the way with his sacrifice. All right. Uh, all right, so now we're here. All right, so... Um, I'm going to show two ways. He showed us way two ways, a basic way and a more, you know, uh, let's see, how do I want to say it? You know, the ultimate way he wants us to, 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 to attain, which is, you know, being filled with the spirit here on earth. Um, all right. So it's a difference between flesh and blood. Uh, recall that there was a, a key difference, you know, established in the old testament uh between flesh and blood where flesh was a stuff of physical life right but blood was some sort of you know special uh essence that gave life to the to, to uh to the flesh right so for example in, you know in the old testament it says a number of times do not eat the blood with the flesh because the blood is the life of the flesh right Okay, so there's a special characteristic of life associated with the blood. All right, so flesh versus blood is basically, you know, doing the minimum requirement to get into heaven versus going the big extra mile. And when I say blood here, I mean, it's a big extra mile, all right, for which there is great reward. <clears throat> all right, uh, John six fifty three. You know, uh, is a, a verse uh, which Jesus says. This. So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in yourself. All right. So does he mean literal uh, flesh and blood or is it spiritual? All right. And you can decide for yourself. Um, you know where Jesus' focus was. It was not on this worldly, carnal, corruptible, material world, but on the spirit world. Right. Uh, Matthew 26, uh, 26 to 29, uh, this is the Last Supper. So while they were eating, Jesus took some bread, and after blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Hey, take the, take, eat this, is, this, eat, this is my body. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it a new, drink it new with you in the Father's kingdom. We'll talk more about what what the word for, for fruit there is. It's not carpos, which is tip. It's genema, right? Which uh, means born of or offspring. Um, so it means this. This is pointing to being born of the Spirit, right? And that's how you enter into God's kingdom, which the word is uh, basilia which means the kingdom of God uh, here on earth as it exists within the hearts of men. It's not out there in the physical world, like a literal kingdom, right? It's the hearts of men in which God's spirit abides and thus rules, all right? Uh, okay, um, now, so this is my interpretation of blood versus uh, uh, flesh, all right? And again, I want to emphasize that this is my interpretation. You know, it's like reading literature, Everyone, you know, anyone can get anything out of it, right? Anyone can read it whatever they, way they want, all right? 
so I'm not saying that I'm absolutely correct. You know, I could be wrong, so don't go crazy and attack, which I know is what people are desperate to do. A lot of people are just desperate to like, you know, they sharpen their, their fangs like with a file <laughs> so they can attack. Just for the sake of attacking. Uh, not understanding this themselves. All right, so uh, the flesh and blood represent two levels of Christian attainment. <coughs> attainment. That's my belief. All right, my interpretation, you know, I'm, I'm saying that. Uh, and it's much like the difference between a child and fathers. Remember in uh, uh, 1 John chapter 2, John is uh, 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 specifying three levels of Christian development. All right. On one level, you have children who are saved because of their faith, right? They're saved from their sins, so that means they sin, right? You know, a lot and all the time, right? Which is most of us, all right? And there's young men who have studied the word hard and who have fought against the evil one. Well, who's the primary evil one? Is it the devil or is it yourself? It's yourself who wants to do all this stuff, right? You don't need the help from the devil. I mean, you can do it yourself. Uh, and then there's fathers. Fathers are those who are more fully, you know, walking in the spirit. All right. Uh, okay. So it's, it's, it's like that, right? You know, blood are those who are uh, walking in the spirit, led by the spirit. All right. So to me, all right, again, this is to me, eating Jesus' flesh did not mean like you're, you're like gnawing on a bone and like chewing up, you know. Uh, eating Jesus' flesh means... Accepting on faith the belief that Jesus was the Son of God who was made flesh, all right, made corruptible flesh, you know, made made to be sin. That's what the Bible says. Made to hang on a, a, a tree, okay, and that he was that he sacrificed his flesh. So he was made flesh and sacrificed his flesh as a propitiation for our salvation, so that we can come back to God. Right, so that's what eating his flesh is accepting that into our hearts, you know, right? The, on faith, the belief that Jesus was made, was God, was made flesh, and then sacrificed his flesh for our salvation. Right, uh, this is this is all that is required to be deemed a child of God and thus an heir to the kingdom, having a place in heaven with God after we die. But this is the minimal requirement, and thus the basic level of Christian development. This, but this uh, is the middle. Okay. So it's like, okay, you know, this is all you need to do, but it's not going the extra mile, right? The higher level, which few Christians attain, and to be honest, I, I can't say I've seen a, a single Christian who I could say, that person's walking in the Spirit. That's, that person's being led by the Spirit, right? A lot of people say it, but, you know, they just think it. You know, being led by the Spirit, man, it's something else. Uh, there's just a purity and a freedom about you, right? A goodness, which, you know, is not on the human level here. You're getting some help from God, right? It, it is to be born of God, okay? It is to be born of God and led by this, the Holy Spirit. This is represented by the blood, right, which is the life of the flesh. So the blood is the life of the flesh, and God is true life which is Zoe. This is God's life. The only word for life out of the 16 words in Greek for life, which is uh, uh, associated with God's life. Well, there's another one, Zao, Z-A-O, right? Zao and Zoe are somewhat synonymous. All right, the true life that comes from God through the Holy Spirit. All right, so that's what the blood is. We'll talk about the blood uh, down here. All right, how to, you know, attaining the Holy Spirit, All right? Which is what the, it's a, it's a core of what this uh, book of John's all about, all right? But, you know, you know, uh, uh, we'll talk about the difference between uh, flesh and blood today. All right, so before we start this, I want to introduce uh, uh, a, a Greek word, you know, uh, Jesus uses the word helper, and, you know, um, especially in John chapter 14, but I think he used it in 15, 16, 17. But in that whole section, Jesus' is the last big uh, teaching, 
all right? And the word for, for helper in Greek is parakletos, and the definition is used in Greek as writers of a, a legal advisor, a pleader, a proxy, or an advocate. It's like your lawyer, right? One who comes forward on behalf of and as re representative of another. Christ is termed our substitutionary intercessory advocate. That's like your lawyer. Therefore, the Holy Spirit is designated by Jesus Christ. Oh, okay, yeah, that's not really necessary for this. But the idea is this, right? The Holy Spirit is who writes is who write you know who writes the law upon our hearts helps us follow the law right and it doesn't so much you know teach us it says in John 14 he'll teach you all things and bring all of Jesus's teachings to your remembrance well it's not an intellectual thing from my experience it's just man he just moves you to to be good right he just changes your taste you no longer want the corrupt things you have no taste for it right that makes it easy Right to not sin because you just don't want it. Right, you just want the pure things. All things are pure to those that are pure. That's what it says in Titus one fifteen. Right, man, when you're walking in the spirit, man, it's easy to be good. It's no no effort. <clears throat> it's no longer you. All you gotta do is keep your relationship right with God. You know, and that's a relationship of pure love. Right, not wanting anything. It's it's agape love, unconditional. Uh, uh, just like God's love, Zoe. Uh, well, that's life, but agape is you know pure, unconditional love. All right, so we're going to compare eating Jesus' flesh with drinking Jesus' blood. Now, eating the flesh is accepting on faith that Jesus was the Son of God, made flesh to be sacrificed as a propitiatory payment for our salvation. All right, drinking the blood which is the life of the flesh, Zoe, is being born of God through the infilling of the Holy Spirit. All right? So that's how you take in his blood. You take in the Holy Spirit. He abides within you. All right? All right. So this is the minimum requirement. This is what God ultimately wants of us. He wants us to walk with him here, you know, on earth. He wants us. So this is getting to heaven after we die. This is, you know, getting to heaven here on earth by God abiding within us here on earth. Recall that the word for heaven is arenos, which means uh, wherever God abides or rests. All right, so number two, we become children of God, heirs to his kingdom, having a place in heaven after we die. We become fathers or sons, not children. All right, you know, the word, the word son here is huyos, and this is reserved, this is, this is synonymous with fathers, right? Those who are led by the Spirit. In fact, Paul says, Right? Those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. Led by the Spirit that abides within us. This is not heaven after we die. This is heaven or rain us on earth now, not just after we die. Right? This is living in heaven now. And again, that is God's ultimate goal for us. Do most Christians attain this? No, nah, you know, I, I myself, I, 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 I'm here. You know, I, 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 I can only hope for heaven after I die because I have faith, right? Uh, okay. Uh, now, the flesh is represented by the bread and the true manna from heaven uh, uh, God gave in the form of his son. So the, the bread, the, the true bread, the true, the true manna from heaven is Jesus Christ, who God gave us to give us eternal life, eternal salvation, Right? You know, uh, Jesus talks about the bread of life, right? Well, there's bread for physical life. There's bread for spiritual life. You know, w what matters more? A little bit of literal bread that will help you survive a few more days in of literal life, which is, you know, short-lived as it is, right? No, that's not what's important. What's important is the bread for eternal life, the bread of life for eternal life, and that's Jesus Christ. His flesh, belief in him, is that bread. Okay, uh, the blood, which is, represents life, the zoe, is represented by the wine or the fruit of the vine. Remember the word fruit is not carpos, uh, which is typically, you know, used for any produce, uh, any product, you know, profit, whatever, right? More generally, Genom, it, the word here is genema, which is to be born into God's kingdom. It is related to Genesis, to create, 
uh, to be an offspring to beget. The Holy Spirit is a true uh, is a true life, and that makes us born again. All right. Uh, we are still slaves to sin, and and we sin all the time with us. So we're saved, but we're still sinners, right? Now we are with 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 blood. We are freed from sin and fleshiness on Jubilee, right? Jubilee is a day of freedom, right? The day in which if you're a slave, you're set free. You become a free man, and if you have any debt, it's the debt's forgiven. And that is a day. You know, spiritually, uh, the day uh, in which the Holy Spirit abides within you. So that's Jubilee. That is also the Sabbatismos, the true day of rest, in which you cease from your works because it is now God working through you. All right? Uh, five, we are to do works as worthless slaves because it is our duty to do. So this is free will effort. Okay. So here, uh, with 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 the blood, with the fill, infilling of the Holy Spirit, we cease from our own works because it is now God who works through us, moving and impelling us to do perfect and powerful works. Right? These are imperfect. These are just our own efforts. Right? And we do it because we do it only because we know we should do it, and we're going to do it because it's our duty. If you try to do it for gain, like I'm going to do this to get salvation, man. It just corrupts it. Uh, all right. So our Sabbath is still the literal seventh day of the week. Uh, the Sabbath, when, when you're walking in the Spirit, when you're filled with uh, Christ's blood, uh, the Holy Spirit, <laughs> His life, it's a Sabbatismos, which is the eternal day of rest. Uh, and it can be on any and every day, right? Uh, you know, not just the literal seventh day of the week. It should be every day you're walking in the Spirit. This is the spiritual or true seventh day of the week in the sense of telos. Telos means completion or perfection in which we can be perfect as God is perfect. You know, like at the end of uh, uh, Matthew chapter 5, Jesus says, hey, you got to love your enemies, you know, you know, pray for those or bless those who, who persecute you, do evil to you, whatever, right? So that you may be, you know, perfect as God is perfect, right? Not easy, not you know, easier said than done, that's for sure. All right, um, it's only possible, you know, when you're made perfect through the infilling of the Holy Spirit. We have to struggle of our own free will to obey and, and not sin. Okay, all right. So we we still have a sin tendency, right? But here you're freed from sin. Obedience is easy, and His yoke is light because the Holy Spirit gives you a goodness and purity that you do not have on your own. And then all things are pure to those who are pure. All right. So what do I, what, do I, what else do I want to say here? Uh, um, no longer a slave to sin. All right. Uh, eight, we have to struggle on our own free will to follow the law. Well, that's the same as not sinning, really. Uh, following the law is easy for the Holy Spirit. Para uh, uh, Kletos. Writes a law upon our hearts, making it easy, uh, 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 making our natural disposition and desires. You only want the good things and have no taste for corrupt things, right? So you know, he makes it easy. Okay, nine. So we have to struggle of our own free will to fight against natural fleshiness, and we usually fail. I mean, I know I fail. Right? I'm not very good at taking insults and mockery and, and provocations. You know, I just want to throw it back in her face. All right. You know, one thing I could say, I'm not an instigator. Right. I'm actually a, a pretty funny, you know, lighthearted guy. But man, 
when I, when people you know go out and just like try to jab you and provoke you and be like mocking and mean, especially when you know that they're not very smart, literally, right? They're pretty ignorant and not very smart. I mean, honestly, pretty stupid. I mean, you know it, but you know, and then they're they're mocking you, right? Uh, it just burns me up, and I, I I'm not good at handling it, right? So I have a lot of fleshliness, all right? Fleshliness is replaced by fruits of the spirit. Love, patience, long-suffering, joy, thankfulness are some of them. I can't remember the whole list. Um, kindness is in there. Yeah, kindness. I can put that in there. Well, you know what? I don't have long-suffering. I don't have patience. When, when ignorant, stupid people, like mocking, really, I just want to throw it back in their face. You know? Uh, so what is that? That's right here. Fleshliness. Uh... The great rewards are for overcoming the world. You know, if I if, if I fall into this, I'm not overcoming the world. The only way to overcome the world is here, and that's through God's help, right? Being filled with His Spirit, because that's what it says. You know, like for example, in First John chapter five, it says, you know, hey, who 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 are those who overcome the world? Those who are born of God, right? Uh, the great rewards are for overcoming the world, which is only possible by being born of God. All right, All right, and now uh, I give you examples from uh, uh, Revelations. When you get to eat from the tree of life, you don't have to face a second death. You're given hidden manna. You know the hidden manna is spiritual manna. It's not literal bread, right? You think munch on like uh, uh, white bread or whole wheat or whatever. You know, seven grain bread, right? You, this is spiritual bread. And you're given a white stone with a new name written on it, right? And I think stone, right? Now, I think of the Ten Commandments, right? This is God's. So this, to me, is like God's law. And, you know, the idea of writing on a stone, right? Back then, that was about as indelible as it gets, right? I mean, it's written in stone, right? It's not like on a piece of paper that can get wet and soggy and ripped up, right? This is, you know, so it's like, you know, eternal, you know, law for like the Ten Commandments. Given authority over all nations and to rule them with a rod of iron, uh, uh, and a rod of iron to rule over them, and the morning star. All right? Well, the morning star is often associated with the devil for some reason. Right? You, you get power over the devil, I guess. Um, given a white robe and your name written in the book of life. Okay. Become a pillar in the temple of God, having God's name written on it. And this is the best one. This is to the church of Laodicea. Given the right to sit on a throne with God. I mean, how about that? This is huge, right? And this is why, you know, you see so, so few Christians attain this because the prize is big, right? Right? You know, and this is nothing for yourself. You should not want this for yourself because that's just greedy, grubby. That's just self again. Um uh, all right, so we're going to go through some verses here, how Jesus says, hey, you know, all you got to do is believe, right? It's all about belief. And then we're going to go through a whole bunch. I'm not going to go through them all, but I'll go through some logical reasons why salvation is only through faith. And then, you know, it's just logical reasons. It's not, you know, that you know, there's not much to that, right? But there's verses which are more important, right? Because this establishes, you know, God's word, all right? Uh, let's see where we're at here. So, flesh, bread, the true manna from heaven. Recall that eating Christ's flesh is accepting on faith. The, well, the belief. I'm going to say the fact. It all comes down to belief. You're right. You can't prove it. You're right. So, you just believe. And there's a, there's a special quality in, in believing what you don't see. You know, it's a matter of trust, uh, which is a huge part of you know, the quality of a relationship, that, that trust without seeing. Uh, accepting on faith the belief that Jesus is the Son of God from the beginning and that he was made corruptible flesh so that his flesh could be sacrificed for us, you know, as the propiti propitiatory payment so that we can come back to God, right? So Jesus, Jesus was the true manna from heaven with the flesh being associated with the bread, the bread of life, uh, flesh, bread of life. All right. Uh, which is the spirit.
spiritual bread of life. The Old Testament Jews ate literal bread from heaven, which is corruptible and per you know corruptible or perishable material stuff or junk. To give us but a few more days of temporal life. I mean, big deal, right? You know, we're talking eternal life, spiritual life forever. And this is just, you know, eh, you get to live more in this world a couple more days with a piece of bread, right? Get in, getting heaven only after we die. So this is uh, this is getting heaven. You know, eating, if we only eat his flesh, all right, this is about getting heaven only after we, if we die. In contrast with heaven on earth, when the Holy Spirit abides in your heart. And this only requires belief, right? our faith. right? Uh, we'll see what's required to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, it, it, it's not complicated, but it, it, it's all about establishing a love relationship based on pure, unadulterated, unconditional love with God, all right? All right, we'll go through the verses for that. But, uh, you know, as far as eating his flesh and, and, and giving us a place in heaven after we die, that's that all that all is required is our belief, our faith, right? You know, a belief that Jesus is the Son of God, that he is God, that he was made flesh, and that, you know, his he, God gave him you know, uh, to sacrifice his flesh as payment for our sins so that we can come back to God. Eating Jesus' flesh means that we accept in faith all these. Eating Jesus' flesh means that we believe he sacrificed his flesh for us just as we are to sacrifice our own flesh, right? So, you know, he, he, when he said a friend will, will give up his life for a friend, no greater love than, you know, is there than to give your life for a friend? Well, he wants us to do the same thing, right? Give up our flesh, ourself. Sacrifice, right? Deny yourself. Pick up our cross daily and follow him. All right, we are not righteous, but rather justified by Jesus' payment. So, you know, you know, a lot of people think, oh, I'm righteous, right? Man, no man is righteous. You know, people people can be pretty crappy, I swear, right? We we're not righteous in the sense that we do no wrong. We do really no we we're righteous only in the sense that we're justified by Jesus' sacrifice. His, his payment wipes away the debt of all our sins. Right? That doesn't make us righteous. That makes us justified. Okay. Uh, there's often confusion there, so I want to uh, emphasize that. All right, so here's some verses from the book of John, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he granted or he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So it comes down to belief, right? And then 18, he who believes in him is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already. So it comes down to belief because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. Remember I said you got to believe that he's the son of God, right? Um... So 336, he who believes in the Son has eternal life. All right. Uh, I guess I'll skip the rest here. 524, truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and does not come to judgment. Uh, so, you know, when he says he believes him who sent me, so this is also that he's the Son of God. This is the work of God that you believe in him who has sent, he, uh, whom he has sent, right? That's Jesus Christ. Believe, you know, in him, Jesus, who, whom God has sent, right? Uh, and this whole thing is they're talking about the bread, you know, and Jesus said the bread for eternal life. And they said, well, how can we get this bread for eternal life? And he says, you, no, the only, no, 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 they say, hey, what work do we have to do to get this bread for eternal life? And he says, the only work you got to do is to believe in him. Um, whom God has sent, right? So that's belief in Jesus Christ as a son of God. All right. Uh, for the Okay, then Jesus says down here, let's see. So they said to him, what then do you do for a sign that we can see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate manna in the wilderness. That's, a, that's the manna from heaven. As it is written, he gave them bread out of heaven to eat. Jesus then said to them, 
Truly, truly, I say to you, it is not Moses who has given you bread out of heaven, but it is the Father who gives you the true bread out of heaven. That's what I'm talking about here. The bread of God is that which comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. That word for life is zoe, right? Not push or bios or one of the other, many other words for life. Uh, then they said to him, Lord, always give us this bread, right? Uh, verse chapter 6, verse 47. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate manna in the wilderness and they died, right? This is the bread which comes down out of heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down out of heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread also which I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. All right? So his flesh is the bread, right? Not, you know, not you can, it's not that you get a munch on him, you know, like like the Catholic transubstantiation uh, stuff, which takes it literally, which is, you know, that's, that's what the devil did, right? The devil took scripture and twisted it into the literal. Well, it was meant to be spiritual, he, took, he twisted it into the literal, made it fleshly, earthly, right? Carnal. Well, don't do what the devil does, man. Don't fall into that trap. Then the Jews began to argue with one another, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? See, they're taking it literally. You know, they're thinking, oh, man, we're going to munch this guy? You know, what are we, cannibals? You know, that's not what Jesus is saying. So Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in yourselves. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. What's the last day? The seventh day, the day of perfection. You know, you know, the last day is not the day, you know, of uh, rapture or whatever. Right? The last day is the seventh day, completion, perfection, the Sabbath, right? For my, for my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and as I live because of the Father, so he, he who eats me will also live because of me. All right. And like I said, I believe this is faith and belief that, you know, that he is the Son of God and was God, or is, or is God, and that he was made flesh so that his flesh could be sacrificed as payment for our sins so that we can have salvation and come back to God. All right, we can have atonement at one minute with God. All right, so here it says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life so that I may take it again. No one has taken it away from me, but I lay it down on my own initiative. I have authority to lay it down and I have authority to take it up again. So that's, you know, belief that he did this for us, right? That he sacrificed himself for our salvation. All right, so the next section, this is the last section I'm going to cover today. I'm not going to read through all these verses. Uh, there's 112 of them. This comes from a website. I mean, you can look it up. In fact, this, this is actually the title of the website, right? The Bible is clear that salvation is by faith alone. Right? So what I do is I added this. I added, before we start uh, give these verses, I add logical reasons. Now, again, this is just logic. This is man's reasoning, right? Yeah, you know, it doesn't come down to man's reason. It comes down to faith, right? You know, I mean, when it, you can't prove it either way. So it comes down to faith. But I just give some logical reasons, which, again, man's reasonings are weak, all right? Faith is what's important. Uh so, but here anyways, uh, one, if we believe that we can save ourselves through works, then we are saying Jesus' suffering and sacrifice on the cross wasn't necessary at all, and, and therefore Jesus was a fraud. He was a fake. You know, that's what, you're, that's what you're saying. If you think you can save yourself, right, you don't need Jesus Christ. That everything he did was unnecessary. Man, that is so sacrilegious, right? Um... Doing, God, doing works for salvation is only the self trying to get some grubby stuff for itself, right? And, and the self is the whole problem. This is only reinforcing the, 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 the source of all our problems, 
right? Which comes from the self. This is just more grubby self serving the self. Which is what God wants us to overcome. You know, uh, we are like the we are all like the guy who owed his master ten thousand talents, right? Right? Uh, in the sense that we have a massive debt of, in sins that we've accumulated for uh, throughout our entire lives that we can't pay back the all, right? You know, you know what a talent is. A talent is six thousand denarii. So one talent is six thousand denarii, and a denarii is six thousand days worth of work. So 10,000 talents is 10,000 times 6,000. What is that? Like 60 million or something like that, right? 60 million days worth of work, right? Well, you're not going to pay that back. No, you know, in the sense that we cannot pay back all the sins that we've done every single day of our lives. You do multiple sins. You're going to pay that all that back with one little token good work here or there. Yeah, I'll go and, you know, uh, serve Thanksgiving yeah, at the poor house, whatever, you know. Like, come on. You know, that's not going to pay back all, right? So, so that's another way of looking at this, right? What did Jesus say? In fact, I should add that. We are all worthless slaves. We are all worthless slaves and good works. Are only our our duty to to do. You uh, you're not gonna we're not gonna we're not gonna get something for it. We don't gain from that. You only. Get salvation from faith. Okay. Salvation is coming back to God, who is invaluable, right? You can't put a price on God. So it's ridiculous to think that we can buy God with a few good works. Well, I'll do a few good works. and Okay, that'll, that'll buy my way back to God. Okay. Doing good works to get uh, something in return corrupts the value of those works. We don't do good works to get anything. We do good works because we are worthless slaves. Oh, I said that, okay. And, and good works are our duty to do. It is like the difference between phileo and agape. Phileo is conditional love. You love them only because you get something back in return, right? Agape is unconditional love, right? This is the pure, perfect love. Uh, doing good works to gain, gain salvation is putting the cart before the horse, the ultimate goal is to come back to God, right? Who is salvation because he is eternal life. And then once we come back to God, he fills us with the Holy Spirit, who then does the good works through us. So it is God doing the good works. And that's a sabbatismos. I'm going to put that there. So sabbatismos, uh, sabbatismos, the day that we rest from our works because it is now God working through us. And also, let's see what I want to say. Uh, salvation can only be gifted to us freely and of no merit. We don't deserve this, right? That's that's called grace. Uh, grace, and the word is um, charisma. Okay. Yeah, grace is God's free gift for no nothing we, we've done and deserved, right? Just our faith. All right, so these are verses that support that. I'm not going to read them all. You can go back in your own time and read them all. All right. Uh, again, there's a hundred and, you know, Paul especially said this, right? Salvation is through faith, not works. Uh, all right. 
So those are those are uh, those are the verses. Now let's go back and review. So the key thing here is, all right. So we said that uh, Jesus said that He is the way, the truth, the life. Well, how is He the way? We said, well, okay. So He ma- He opened the way. He made the way possible with His sacrifice. All right. We, only with His sacrifice can we come back to God. All right. That that creates atonement. And then He showed us the way. And I said, well, He showed us that there is really two levels of Christian attainment. You know, bare bones minimum, which you know is where most Christians are at, is. We are saved because of our faith. After we die, we'll have a place in heaven because we believe, right? But he wants us to go the extra mile, right? Which is to, uh, you know, drink his blood. The blood is life. That life is the Holy Spirit, right? The true life of the flesh. You know, eating his flesh is belief that he's that he was made flesh, that he was God made flesh, and that he sacrificed his flesh for us of his own free will, for our salvation. Drinking his blood is, uh, you know, being born again of the spirit. spirit. You know, blood is the life of the flesh. The true life of the flesh is the Holy Spirit. Okay. And, you know, I went through the differences here. Uh, but I said at the very one, you see there's nine here, but there's ten here. Ten here is that the great rewards, right? The great reward is for uh, being born again. And this is the only way you can overcome the world. Right, so uh, overcoming the world, yeah. Only way to overcome the world is to be born of the Spirit, born of God. All right. Okay, so that's it for that lesson. Uh, Hopefully it made sense there.